Hi, this is Dave from javacodejunkie.com and welcome to another Java Swing tutorial. In today's episode, we're going to look at the Flow Layout Manager. So let's get right to the code. The Flow Layout Manager positions its components in a single line from left to right until it runs out of real estate. So once you get to the end of the size of your container, using a flow layout will wrap to the next line and components will be added from there. So it's left to right, top to bottom. I've already set up our standard starting point for a Java Swing project. If you recall from our JFrame video earlier in this Java Swing series, the JFrame standard layout is a border layout. Now that is one of the five areas, north, south, east, west, and center. The default layout for a JPanel, on the other hand, is a flow layout. So let's create a new JPanel. I'll call it Panel. I will create this in the initialization section of our program. Panel equals new J panel. And I will explicitly give it a flow layout as a layout manager. I'm going to give it a center alignment. With a horizontal component gap of 10 pixels and a vertical gap of 5 pixels should we have more than one line. Organize our imports and now let's go down here just before we make the frame visible on the screen. I'm going to add the panel to the center area of our frame which is using the border layout. So frame dot add panel border layout dot center. And let's just for kicks color the panel to something other than the standard light gray. I'll set the background to pink, let's say, just to make it stand out. Let's run and you should see since it's added to the center that it occupies the entire space of our JFrame since none of the other sections, north, south, west, or east, have anything in them. The center area will claim all available space. Let's now add some components to our panel. And I'm just going to do this in a loop. I equals one. I, oops. I less than or equal to, say, five. I plus plus. I'm going to, whoops, not supposed to be integer. I'm going to create some button. And the text on the button, I'm going to use the word button plus the number of our loop counter, which is integer dot string i. And then we'll add that button that we've just created in our loop to our panel. And let's run and we should see five buttons added to our J panel. The buttons as you see are center aligned as that's the alignment that we've set in the flow layout. See that in the code right here, flow layout dot center. We have a horizontal gap of 10 pixels between components in our flow layout. And there's also a five pixel vertical gap, which you can't see because we only have a single line of components. But if I were to now resize our J frame so that it gets smaller, you'll see once we get to the point where we can no longer horizontally fit the five buttons on the screen, that they will wrap down to a second line. If I continue to decrease the space, another button falls down and another to the point where all of the buttons occupy 
separate lines as we get as about as small as we are going to get. So that's essentially the flow layout. Components are added one after the other and they occupy space from left to right and from top to bottom depending on the amount of space that you have in your container. Now that works all well and good with the center area of the border layout. What if we were to add that to the north area of the border layout? We'll run it again. Now this time you'll see that the size of the north area is smaller. It does not take up the entire space of our frame. It takes up space based on how the components are laid out before the frame is displayed. And since we have enough horizontal space to add them all on a single line, that's what we get in the north area. If you recall from our J-frame video, once a J-frame is displayed, the north and south areas of the border border layout do not change their height and the west and east areas of the border layout do not change their width. We can resize and it will change the horizontal size of the north and south and if we resize the height it would change the size height of the west and east areas but the west and east areas would not change their width. So for example, if we were now to resize to the point where we can no longer get all of five of these buttons on a single line, you'll see that one of them seems to disappear. Now it's still there, it's just that we can't see it in our current layout because the north area of the border layout once it is displayed does not change its height. You have to be aware of what you want to achieve when you're trying to nest these layouts. You may want to set the minimum size of your J-frame so that uh, things like that don't happen. Visually on the screen it looks like things disappear so you may want to say okay I only want a minimum of say 400 by 400 on my J-frame. So it worked perfectly in the center area because the center area actually resizes as the frame is resized. But the other four areas of the border layout, they only resize the width for the north and south areas or the height for the west and the east areas. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please hit the like button and consider subscribing so that you'll never miss any future content when I release new videos. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, please be safe, take care, and keep on coding.